welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video, I'd like to go over a few problem-solving tips uh, related to two uh, variable Diophantine equations before you uh, head on to the problem set. Uh, the first tip uh, relates to Diophantine equations where the coefficients of x and y uh, share a common divisor, and that common divisor also divides into the constant term, in this case, uh, example 33. So I just wanted to point out that your intuition is in fact correct. You do want to divide out by that common divisor of 3 to leave yourself with a somewhat simpler Diophantine equation. And in this case, we can apply the methods that we've described in the previous videos to uh, come up with a solution set of x equal to, in this case, 3 times some integer n plus 11, and y is equal to minus that same integer for n, an element of uh, all z. So the next uh, tip I'd like to offer uh, relates to Diophantine equations where the coefficients are such that one of the coefficients divides evenly into the constant term. Uh, now we can use the, the methods that we described in the previous videos to attack this, but uh, I'd like to point out a uh, shortcut for this type of Diophantine equation and it's kind of important because uh, this type of simplified Diophantine equation is more likely to uh, appear in an AMC type uh, exam test. So in the case where one of the coefficients divides evenly into the constant term, uh, bring that term over to the right side and factor out that uh, common divisor, 7 in this case. and do a variable substitution where 4 minus y we substitute for z. And now we're left with uh, a simple ratio uh, Diophantine equation, and we've come across those before. They're quite easy to solve. You merely uh, 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 flip the, uh, the coefficient to the other variable, and we find that we have a solution set that can be described as x equal to 7 times some integer n, and z is equal to 3 times that same integer n. And then we can take the z and back substitute it to conclude that y is equal to 4 minus 3n, again, for n, an element of uh, all integers. And the last tip I'd like to offer uh, relates to Diophantine equations that are rather simple. So, for instance, uh, x plus 2y is equal to 20, where we're trying to, trying to solve for xy uh, elements of uh, non-negative integers so z greater than or equal to zero. So uh, we can apply the, the methods that we've used before to pretty quickly come to the conclusion that uh, x can be described by the solution set of 2n plus 20 in this case and y as minus that integer n. And uh, it might be easier to substitute uh, the variable m equals minus n to give you an equivalent description of y equal to m, x equal to 20 minus 2m, and then it's pretty easy to see that the, uh, the solutions that satisfy the x and y greater than or equal to 0 are of the form for m equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10 for uh, 11 solutions total. And that's pretty easy to see, but uh, one thing I'd like to uh, to suggest is that it's sometimes very uh, helpful to uh, either solve or at least examine these equations graphically and they can often give you an insight that you couldn't get otherwise. So in this case we're going to take a look at this equation graphically and what we realize is that this equation is a line that basically stretches from uh, y equal to 10 to x equal to 20 And there's actually a solution point at these axes. And the problem is essentially asking us to find the lattice points along this line. I haven't drawn them all out there. But what you quickly realize is when you examine it in this graphical form is that these lattice points basically uh, are formed along every integer value along the y-axis all the way down to 0. And then it's pretty quickly to, to convince yourself that the, the total number of uh, solutions that are available equals 10, or I'm sorry, 11. Uh, in total. And so that's just a quick way to, to basically arrive at the same uh, 
answer that you would have had to arrive at uh, algebraically. And the reason why I bring this up is that sometimes uh, the questions that you're being asked to solve amount to uh, finding lattice points along line segments. So for example, a question may give you uh, a line that's uh, results are described by this segment here, and the problem may ask you to solve for the various integer solutions between these two endpoints. And this may be a, a difficult problem to solve because the, 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 uh, the linear equation that describes this line segment is given by kind of a Diophantine equation that has x and y coefficients along with a constant term. And you may find out that graphically you can translate the question that's being asked for to a simpler question that involves a line segment that now passes through zero. And now you need to find basically the same set of, or mapped set of solution points along this uh, line that now goes through zero. And that often provides a much simpler solution because this line now can be described by a simple ratio type Diophantine equation. And we know that these ratio type Diophantine equations are very easy to solve. They're very easy to, to map out the lattice points that solve the, uh, the points along uh, a Diophantine equation that goes through the origin. So I just wanted to point out that solution method. Uh, these three solution methods are often very applicable to the types of problems that you would encounter in the AMC level of testing. So good luck with the next problem set, and we'll see you after that. Bye-bye.